labor, but to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We pause to remember our predecessors. Bishop Charles Harrison Mason, founder and senior bishop of the Church of God in Christ Incorporated. Bishop O.T. Jones, Sr., second senior bishop. Bishop J.O. Patterson, Sr., first elected presiding bishop. Bishop, second elected presiding bishop. Bishop Chandler D. Owens, third elected presiding bishop. Bishop Gilbert Earl Patterson, fourth elected presiding bishop. Mother Lizzie Woods Robinson, first general mother. Mother Lillian Brooks Coffey, second general mother and organizer of the Women's International Convention. Mother Annie L. Bailey, third general mother. Mother Maddie McLaughlin, fourth general mother. Mother Emma F. Crouch, fifth general mother. Mrs. Elsie Washington Mason, wife of our founder, Bishop C.H. Mason. Mrs. First elected presiding bishop's wife, Dr. Arenia C. Mallory, president, Saints Junior College. Bishop Lauren E. Mann, general board member, Vermont jurisdiction. Bishop John Henry Sheard, chairman of the board of bishops and father of our presiding bishop, J. Drew Sheard, Michigan Southwest first ecclesiastical jurisdiction. Bishop Mark Lamont Perry, Ohio Southern Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. Bishop Robson Pavier, Auxiliary Bishop, Brazil Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. Bishop Henry I. Malloy, South Africa, Fourth Jurisdiction. Bishop Samuel E. Iglehart, Texas Southwest Jurisdiction. Bishop Oliver J. Haney, Jr., Prelate Emeritus, Northern Georgia First Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. Bishop Juan LaRue Morrison, Prelate Emeritus, Illinois Central Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. Bishop Hersey L. Taylor, Auxiliary Bishop, Eastern New York First Jurisdiction. Bishop Eddie Virgil McGee, Auxiliary Bishop, California Southern Third Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. Bishop Willie B. Toon, Auxiliary Bishop, Michigan Southwest Second Ecclesiastical. Supervisor Sheila A. Vickers, Republic of Korea Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. Supervisor Norma Burrell, Michigan Northeast Jurisdiction. Supervisor Gwendolyn Robinson Page, Massachusetts Greater Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. Supervisor Ann Dickerson Bragg, India First Jurisdiction. Supervisor Olga Malloy, South Africa Fourth Jurisdiction. Supervisor Francis Sykes Curtis, Southwest Second Jurisdiction. Supervisor Lola Bell Kaiser Stinson, New York Eastern Fourth Jurisdiction. Supervisor Emerita Eastern Second Jurisdiction. Supervisor Emerita Joan Walker, California Southwest Jurisdiction. Mother Willie Mae Smith, Supervisor Emerita, New York. Mother Barbara S. Green, Supervisor Emerita, New Garden State Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. Supervisor Fadis N. Wagner, Supervisor Emerita of California Evangel Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. Supervisor Lily Hutchinson, Supervisor Emerita, Central Florida First Jurisdiction. Supervisor Sophia Warren, 
Supervisor Emerita, Hawaii, first jurisdiction. Supervisor Nancy Frank Sanford, Supervisor Without Charge, Northwest Harvest Jurisdiction. Mother Veodia Graves, Supervisor Without Charge, Southern California Evangelistic Jurisdiction. Mother Thelma E. Scott, Supervisor Without Charge, Pennsylvania Eastern Jurisdiction. Mother Josephine Beverly, Assistant Supervisor, Northeast First Historic Jurisdiction of Michigan. Madam Doris Brooks, of Bishop P.A. Brooks, First Assistant Presiding Bishop. Mother Jesse Well Brown, widow of Bishop Abraham Brown, Cote d'Ivory Jurisdiction. Mother Lillian Houston, Wife of Bishop Day, Texas Northeast Second Jurisdiction. Evangelist Rachel Hankerson, wife of Bishop Elijah Hankerson. Missouri Midwest Jurisdiction. Mother Clara Agnes Cantrell Clemens, widow of Bishop Ithiel Clemens. Mother Floria Shepherd, widow of Bishop Albert Shepherd. Western Florida Jurisdiction. Mother Ada Jefferson, widow of Bishop Ralph Jefferson. Western Canada Jurisdiction. Mother Johnny Norman, widow of Bishop Jerome Norman. Barbados Jurisdiction. Lady Melissa Reeves Clark, wife of Bishop Melvin E. Clark. Pennsylvania Western Second Jurisdiction. Mother Vivian V. Haynes, widow of Bishop Newell Haynes, General Board Member, Texas Northeast First Jurisdiction. Mother Calverta Marshall, widow of Bishop Cody Vernon Marshall, Jr. Northern Illinois Jurisdiction. Supervisor Sophia Warren, Supervisor Emerita, Hawaii, first jurisdiction. Mother Josephine Beverly, Assistant Supervisor, Northern First Historic Jurisdiction of Michigan. Mother Coretta Grice, Supervisor Without Charge, Maryland Central Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. As we remember now, Administrative Facilitator Supervisor Joyce L. Rogers of the Texas Northeast First Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. Would you please focus now your attention on the screens for a very special tribute. My dear brothers and sisters, you know what a jewel my dear sister Evangelist Joyce Rogers was to the body of Christ. She was energetic, she was sincere, and she always had something good to say to you. What a charismatic leader she was. I am so thankful that she was my sister and friend. We started in the youth department in 1995, and the Lord blessed us, and we continued to move up the ladder in the youth department and then even up the ladder in the church. You know why? Because her heart was sincere. She really loved the Church of God in Christ, the people of God, and she loved the leadership of this great church. And so we honor her memory, but certainly we have had a great loss when we lost our dear sister. But to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And we love her and we will continue to think about those great messages she was a giant slayer. In Jesus' name, God bless. Evangelist, supervisor, mother, Joyce L. Rogers, administrative facilitator of programming for the Women's International Convention and the Department of Women as a whole, co-marshal, and so much more, the chair lady of the International Youth Department, who was a mother 
to a whole generation of brilliant and astute young people. A national evangelist with an electrifying, dynamic spoken word ministry, an anointed prayer warrior. She was so authentic and comfortable with herself. It was contagious. Every once in a while, God makes choice of a special vessel whom he fills with massive doses of his glory. He endowed her with an immense capacity to simultaneously reach people on a very personal level. Superintendent Timmons, I don't know who has possession of her mobile phone, but I'm very sure that many national leaders of all denominations, coupled with saints young and old across the globe, is locked in that phone. Mother Joyce, as I affectionately called her, was very, very special to me. A daughter, a friend, a loyal and trusted confidant. She served well, and I truly believe she was empty when she left this earth. And so we continue to accept the will of God, and we say, rest well from your labors, Mother Joyce. Your name will forever ring in the archives of the International Department of Women. We will forever love you and remember your good works. God bless. My dear brother. At this time, Lady Barbara McKinney is coming. She's carrying a candle that represents Supervisor Rogers' role as the International Department of Women Administrative Facilitator. Lady Kathy Jackson is carrying a candle that represents her role as jurisdictional supervisor for Texas Northeast jurisdiction. And Dr. Lawana Grant is carrying a candle representing her role as coordinator of programming for the International Department of Women. Supervisor Rogers indeed allowed her light to shine. And while we extinguish the light on this side of heaven, however, the work she completed will continue to shine for generations to come. Shall we all stand? Let's pause for a moment of silence as we remember all of these, our loved ones, who have transitioned to the church triumph. continue to bless their legacy.
Apostle and Presiding Bishop, Bishop J. Drew Sheard. Come on, let's praise God for our leader tonight. Our first assistant presiding bishop, Bishop Jerry Wayne Macklin. Our second assistant presiding bishop, Bishop Wooten on tonight. And all of our general board members as they are making their way into the International Women's Convention for the Church of God in Christ. Come on, let's celebrate our leaders tonight, women of God. And as we put our hands together, how many want to rise in the morning? You want to see Jesus. I want to see Jesus. Jesus one more time everybody we are so excited to be here again after two years the Lord has kept us and we are grateful tonight we are so excited to be in the house of the Lord we are excited for another opportunity to join together again in the great church of God in Christ the greatest church in the world do you agree with me tonight? Come on, let's celebrate our church. Come on, clap your hands and celebrate our church. Celebrate our church. We are so excited to be here. We are here tonight to perform a task, hallelujah, to lead the people of God in the worship in giving. Such a high form of worship. He said in this word, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, 
pressed down, shaken together, running over, the Bible says, shall men give into your bosom. So we're happy for an opportunity, another opportunity tonight to share in our giving. We don't have a lot of time tonight, so I trust that all of you are prepared to give, to share. We honor the Lord for our great supervisor and the work that she is doing in this great women's department, our 72nd Women's Convention. Will we celebrate that? Can we just celebrate 72? Hallelujah. Glory to God. So tonight we want to share. We want to be liberal. Glory to God. This offering is going toward the ministry, the ministry, the work of God. Hallelujah. And so we want to be liberal tonight. And I'm going to ask very quickly, very quickly, if all of us, somebody look at your neighbor and say all of us, would share tonight with a seed of $100. $100. We haven't been together in a long time. So I would ask on tonight, if everybody would share tonight with a seed of $100. For all of our leaders, definitely all of our supervisors, glory to God, our district missionaries, all of the women of God, we want to lead out tonight with a seed of $100. If you're going to share that seed tonight, would you stand with me? The Lord is good. Hallelujah. And we are still here because of his grace, because of his mercy. Many of us, the devil had his way. We would not be here tonight. The enemy tried to take our lives during these last two and a half years, during the COVID pandemic, but we are still here because God is faithful. So we want to be liberal. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the 72nd Women's International Convention. We're here in the wonderful city of Orlando, Florida at the Marriott World Center. And what a time we're having on tonight. I want to thank you for joining in through our live streaming. Whether you are on Kojic.org, the Kojic Facebook pages, or the International Department of Women page, we are so grateful for you to be here with tonight. I am sitting here with the awesome assistant, second assistant, general supervisor of the Church of God in Christ, Lady Vanessa Winbush Gatlin. How are you doing? tonight mother Gatlin I'm telling you God is just blessing us in this convention uh, and also joining me tonight is the first lady of the burning bush church of God in Christ lady Bonita Shelby who is also the mother of Shelby five welcome lady Shelby God bless you you, we are so here to have you both tonight. Listen, we are having a time in the Lord. So if you are in the Florida area, please get to the Marriott World Center. Our general supervisor of the, the International Department of Women is going to be sharing a powerful word from the Lord in just a few moments. And you still have time to get here. But in the meantime, we had a wonderful Women in Leadership Conference on today. Lady Gatlin, tell us about that conference today. The conference today we dealt with crushing the challenges that we're facing with foundational principles and when I tell you people have been stopping me everywhere we got in the ring we got in the ring to fight today the good fight of faith and they have been so helped today people have been delivered and set free all because we trusted God to crush our challenges all of the all of the presenters were just extraordinary you just have to be there to feel the deliverance that God gave us on today. I'm telling you, we're having a great time here at the Women's International Convention. And not only did we have an awesome Women in Leadership Conference, on tomorrow, the auxiliary bands and training units are going to be going forth during the day from 11 to 1.30. You don't want to miss this convention if you are in the city. I'm so happy to have Lady Bonita Shelby with us on tonight. Lady Bonita, what, what was one of your takeaways from the Women in Leadership Conference I have, today? I had so many already. Today when I attended the Lead Hership Conference, all of our services have been power packed, dynamic. Today, I got just what I needed. The women were excited, empowered. They were leaving the convention center empowered and excited about their future. That ring said something to me today. It 
we're in the fight of our life, and it showed that women were being delivered, set free. And when we got the little boxing gloves that we wrote three things, three takeaways, three things that we wanted the Lord to deliver us from, I knew at that moment that deliverance was in the room, and we're ready. I'm telling you, you don't want to miss this convention. You, We have three more exciting days for you. Get to the Marriott World Orlando Center. I'm telling you, this week, it's going to be an unusual experience. Our general mother already told us to expect a release this week. So whatever you're dealing with, if you tune in tonight, expect a release from the Lord. And this is a great opportunity. Tell the people of God how they can give tonight to this wonderful convention. Absolutely. We want you to be a part of giving tonight. These are the ways that you can give so that you can be blessed and that God will bless your seed, germinate it, and let it begin to increase. Listen, go to Kojic.org, Women's Department. Kojic.org, Women's Department. Or you can go to Givelify. When you go to the Givelify app, go to the International Department of Women. That's it, Givelify, International Department of Women. Or PayPal. I-D-O-W Kojic PayPal I-D-O-W Kojic If you don't do any of those And you said listen I'm old school It doesn't matter You can mail it in To Women's International Convention 5 Touchstone Court That's 5 Touchstone Court Mansfield, Texas 76063 I need you to give. I need you to trust God. It's good ground. It's going to come up right where you need it to be. Don't you miss this opportunity of sowing. Thank you, Mother Gatlin. I'm telling you, I'm sitting next to two powerful speakers, preachers, however you want to call it. If we're here on tonight, they are wonderful women of the Lord whom God is using all across the globe. Listen, you've got to get down to the Marriott World Center and join in with us this week. Mother Shelby is getting ready to pray for those of you that need prayer, for those of you that don't know the Lord. This is a wonderful opportunity to accept your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lady Shelby, before we close tonight, why don't you pray for those that are tuning in on tonight to this live stream? Thank you. Father, we thank you. We bless you for this moment. Father, we thank you for everyone that is tuned in to this live. And we ask, oh God, that you would bless them and meet them at the point of their need. We thank you for your deliverance. We thank you for your power. We thank you for breakthrough. And tonight, oh God, we claim and we declare victory over the lives of your people. Some woman that's watching, Lord, they need you. And we ask that you would meet them there, God, and cover them and surround them with your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And we thank you and we honor you and we glorify you and we say amen and amen. Amen. Please don't touch that down. Our general supervisor is getting ready to share the word of the Lord. And I'm telling you, she's a preacher, preacher, isn't she? Oh, she's a preacher, 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 preacher. And she's going to give that word in such a way that everybody will be able to receive it. I'm telling you, don't you enjoy when our mother comes to Lord? Mother, mother has blessed us. She blesses us with her presence all the time. But when her mouth opens, there are so many nuggets of wisdom that I grab. And I take home and I use them for my future. She's going to bring a dynamic word tonight. Amen. The beautiful thing about our mother, she reaches all ages, all cultures. She is a global speaker whom God is using in this day and time. How blessed we are to have this wonderful gift leading the International Department of Women. And please come back tomorrow night because the First Lady of the Church of God in Christ, we all know her as a singer a world-class singer, but she's also a woman of God who knows how to share the word of the Lord. Our first lady, Karen Clark Shear. I'm telling you, she's coming oh, tomorrow she's night. Not, listen, she's coming for you with the gospel. She is going to preach in this house. Don't you dare miss it. Amen. She's coming, so please stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. In just a few word moments, our general supervisor, Mother Barbara McCool Lewis, is going to be sharing the word of the Lord on tonight. And I believe whatever your need is, whatever you're asking God to do for you, I believe if you hear this word tonight and believe by faith that God's going to do it, expect 
that miracle in your house tonight in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining the live TV stream. We're getting ready to go back into the main service tonight. God bless you all, and we'll see you again after the night service. God bless. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for every gift. We thank you for every giver. You said in your word, prove me now and see. Won't I open up the window of heaven? Pour you out blessings that you don't have room enough to receive. You said that you would make us the lender and not the borrower. You said that we would be above, but not just above. You said above only and not beneath. And so we thank you because you are a promise keeper. We'll forever give your name the praise. All the glory and the honor shall be thine. In the matchless, majestic name of the Lord Jesus. Somebody clap your hands and tell him thank you. Tell him thank you again. One more time, say thank you. Amen. Amen. It is always an honor to sow into the kingdom of God. Amen. Anybody happy about sowing seed into the kingdom of God? And so we thank you for your giving on tonight. We're going to receive our observations, convention directives, and acknowledgments of guests. Our observations will come from Supervisor Harazine Keyes. She serves as an administ administrative facilitator, advisory board president, and program chairperson for the Women's International Convention. Our convention directors will be by Lady Barbara J. McKinney, Administrative Facilitator for the Women's International Convention, and Acknowledgements of Guests, Supervisor Gwendolyn Lawson Townsend, who serves as the Executive Secretary for the International Department of Women. Let's receive them in that order. The Women's Convention Office is located in the Chicago Room on the first floor. The hours of operation will be from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and 3.30 to 6 p.m. Uh, today through Friday. Delegates, lunch began today and will run through Friday from 1.30 to 2.30 p.m. Breakfast starts tomorrow morning through Friday from 7 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. All meals will be held in the Palms Ballroom on today, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Please note that breakfast will be held in the Crystal Ballroom on Thursday morning. Please bring your premier or red card and be on time. If you prepaid for your convention bag or program, you can pick them up at our distribution center on the first floor outside of the Cypress Ballroom. Our operation hours will begin Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 12 noon, at 3 p.m. until 7 p.m. The e-journal will be sent to all registered delegates. The convention bag, which includes a program, is $40. The program only is $10 and can be purchased in the Chicago room from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. and from 3.30 until 6 p.m. The weekly schedule is complimentary. If you are using a wheelchair or scooter as a mode of transportation, please park it in the designated area against the outside wall of the Cypress Ballroom. Purchase DVDs and CDs of the 72nd Women's International Convention at the Cypress Registration Booth. Please visit the exhibits and religious vendors in the Grand Ballroom 7 and 8. Operating hours started today and will run through Friday from 10 a.m. until 8 p.m. daily. Chosen of God and Precious. Thursday, June the 2nd 
at 1.30 p.m., the President's Luncheon, honoring our convention president. Oh, we can do better than that. Honoring our convention president. We can do better than that. Honoring our convention president, Mother Barbara McCool Lewis. This event will be held in the Palms Ballroom for all premier and red card delegates. The colors, the colors are lavender and silver and a touch of white. You must bring your premier card or red card to enter the luncheon. Thankfully, it is a sold out event. Praise the Lord. Please contact our Women's Convention Security Task Force to report all incidents or emergencies by calling Lady Regina Starks. Telephone number is 817-797-5034 or by visiting one of the security team locations in the Grand Ballroom 5 or the command center in the Anaheim room. If you have any me a medical emergency of any type or incident, please visit the nurse's station located in Magnolia 7. The lost and found desk is located to the right of the platform if you have lost any items during this convention. Honoring our supervisors will be held during the Thursday morning service in the Cypress Ballroom. We will be acknowledging those supervisors with the highest premier, red card, and white card delegates and compliment names. At this time, please direct your attention to the screen for video announcements. Thank you. Have you ever dreamed of going to the Holy Land? Join Bishop and First Lady Plummer as they welcome the presiding bishop of the Church of God in Christ, Bishop J. Drew Sheard and First Lady Karen Clark Sheard to the Holy Land for Holy Convocation. Come journey with us to Bethlehem, the birthplace of Jesus, the Sea of Galilee, where he walked on water. Be inspired by visiting the Western Wall and Capernaum, where Jesus performed miracles. Plus, experience being baptized in the Jordan River. Be prepared to watch the Bible come to life and witness Israel like never before. Visit us at KojikIsraelTours.com and reserve your spot today. Hi, I'm Terry from the Church of God in Christ Publishing House, and I want you to power up your summer with our Christian education resources. Engage yourself and your students in comprehensive discussions through relevant biblical content that is empowering, transforming, and challenging. We also offer curriculum for all ages. Explore powerful living, YPWW, prayer and Bible band topics, world mission topics, interpretive expositories, our annual lesson commentary, and much more. Reserve your summer literature by visiting www.kojikpublishinghouse.net. Hey, are you interested in receiving all of your favorite publications in a digital download? Well, the wait is over. Beginning this summer of 2022, our first digital download will begin with Power for Living. Visit us online or call us directly at area code 877-746-8578. I look forward to hearing from you real soon. So since I knew what God said, why didn't I stay here instead of going through all of this stuff? And that's the way the enemy does. He gives us a bout without, but we can win. The doctor said 98% 
of the people who even approach the level of sickness that Karen is don't make it. They only gave her a 2% chance to live. And so we need to be practical and realistic when we tell people when they get saved, now listen, uh, this is not going to be uh, uh, as, as easy as you may have heard. However, you got more power. It's, it's key to encourage people in this season that in spite of how difficult and painful this season is, God's got something better for us. So we just got to hang in there and keep on moving forward. Maybe God ain't called me to do this. You know, if I'm turning, if they turning against me, like maybe this ain't what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> maybe I was supposed to stay, maybe I was just supposed to stay Brother Drew, you know? And, and uh, what happened is I saw uh, things changing because now I had acknowledged my call to the ministry. I'm just excited for the opportunity to speak into some people's lives who are having some challenges. I'm privileged to be able to encourage that person that you ain't in this by yourself. You got some, you got some help. Go to your corner and in the bow, go to your corner, get refreshed. Uh, 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 let them pour some ice water on your head, but come back out swinging because you may be losing the fight and you may be in the 12th round and you done lost all the rounds. But in that 12th round, God's got a knockout punch for you. Good evening. We want to thank all of you for following our health protocols. This is new for us, and so we're still working out the kinks. But in our first report, there were two people who answered yes to our questions, and they had COVID-19 positive. Uh, those people happen not to be here in the city. They answered those questions and they were still home and they remained home. You know, health protocol is very important to us. We want to do as much as we can to keep people safe. So we ask that you cooperate with us. You know, don't tell us uh, not to take your temperature and that you're not gonna answer any of our questions and you just walk right by us. You know, saints don't do that. We're just trying to be safe. We will be taking temperatures and asking questions for those of you who don't have the information or the link on your phone. We're gonna be doing that for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. That's very important and we we register everybody because that's for contact tracing. Even if you're just coming Friday night, we like to have your information so if something happens, we can get in touch with you. You know, we had a wonderful day today. A wonderful day. A wonderful day. Uh, Monday 5 a.m. prayer was well attended and spirit filled. Monday night music extravaganza was well attended. And the executive board breakfast was extremely well attended. And the leadership conference, it's always so very creative. Uh, Sister Gadlin, Dr. Gadlin, she is so creative. And we always are able to take something back home with us. Now, the love showed to our first lady, Karen Clark Sheard, was beautiful. It was beautiful. And the church was almost filled. Now tonight is one of the highlights of our convention. This is our convention president's annual address. And we're looking forward to hearing from our mom. 
All right, I want to tell each and every one of you, please wear your mask. This is mandatory for us at the Women's International Convention. It's not mandatory for CDC, but it is mandatory for the Women's International Convention. Right. Wednesday, Wednesday we have just such uh, all of our auxiliaries and bands and units. Uh, and if you have, and these are free, these are our convention schedules and you can pick them up at the distribution uh, center. But everything, all of the places that you want to go, they, they've got all of the rooms. And so it is a great tool for you to know where you're going. Our men's class starts Wednesday from 10 to 12. And our first lady will be our keynote speaker. So we are excited. Thursday, as, as was mentioned, and I have to mention it again, this is our president's luncheon, chosen of God and precious. And many people don't understand, this is when we really love on our mom because all of these offerings, she doesn't get any of that. The only thing she gets is our president's luncheon where we show love. So please participate. That's very, very important. We do have a few tickets le left, and you can purchase those tickets in, um, I believe it's the Chicago room uh, where Sister Lena is. So we, we did discover we do have a few more tickets. Okay, Friday. Everybody say Friday night. All right, that's our presiding bishop, Bishop J. Drew Sheard, will be giving our keynote speak. And we want everybody to be there. Everybody. Now we want you to enjoy this conference. It's our first conference in a couple of years. We certainly have had some things that we need to work on, and we're certainly going to do that. We want to thank you for your patience and we want to thank you for your kindness. This post-pandemic, we are going to be better and better. Thank you so much. I do want to say that breakfast is at 7 a.m. to 8.30. God bless. How good and how pleasant it is for us to be here together in unity, amen? In respect, I graciously acknowledge that the house has been addressed. I am so honored to stand here and be able to acknowledge all of our guests. Now we know that these are not guests, but certainly we want to acknowledge the members of the Lewis family that is on the platform and the members of the Sheard family on the platform. Amen. Now, we'd like to acknowledge all of our guests that are in the house of the Lord on tonight. Those of you who have uh, come to the house of the Lord, but you are not members of the Church of God in Christ. You just want to join in the praise and you want to hear what the word of the Lord is on tonight. Those of you who are not members of the Church of God in Christ, will you please stand so that we can acknowledge you? And those that are sitting next to them or close to them, if you will just wave to them and smile with your eyes, that would be wonderful. We see you. God bless you. That's beautiful. Amen. Thank you so much. Now, there are guests and there are members of the Church of God in Christ that are here for the very first time in person. Those who are here visiting our Women's International Convention 2022 for the very first time, we would love you to stand. We really want to acknowledge you. Look at this. This is wonderful. Look at this. God bless you. Amen. I want you to know that you are in the right place 
at the right time. God bless you. Thank you so much for standing. We want to acknowledge you. We want to welcome you. On behalf of our convention president and general supervisor, Mother Barbara McCoo Lewis, her staff, our presiding bishop, J. Drew Sheard, and the presidium of the Church of God in Christ, we offer a heartfelt welcome to our 72nd Women's International Convention of the Church of God in Christ. God bless you. We are praying that God enriches and mightily blesses you on this evening. Excited to be in the state of Florida. Are there any Floridians in the house tonight? Anybody from Florida? And you are excited about it, amen. We are excited to be here. We, exci we are excited because we came to Florida to go to church. Look at somebody say, I came to go to church. Not Disneyland, hallelujah. We're going to be here and we're going to worship the Lord together because we never know what opportunity our worship service, the Lord will shower you with your miracle. Well, we're going to have Supervisor Joanne Hill who serves in the Florida Eastern Jurisdiction. She is coming at this time and she's going to formally welcome us to the state of Florida. She will be standing with other jurisdictional supervisors from the state of Florida. Come on, let's welcome Mother tonight or this tonight to the podium. Isn't she beautiful? Come on, Florida, you're not clapping loud enough. Hallelujah. God be the glory. It is my pleasure to extend to you a cheerful and warm welcome to the 72nd Women's International Convention in Orlando, Florida. Your present means makes us happy. We welcome you from the eight jurisdictions in Florida. Florida Western, Bishop Willie J. Matheny, and Supervisor Agatha Gilmore. Florida Western Second, Bishop Larry Perkins and Supervisor Ruby D. Williams. Florida Central First, Bishop Gary L. Hall and Supervisor Designate LaShawn Young. Florida Central Second, Bishop Edward Robinson, Senior and Supervisor Judy Little. Florida Northwest, Bishop Willie C. Green, and Supervisor Dolly Reed. Florida Southern, Bishop Julian Jackson, and Supervisor Cecilia Collins. Florida Southwestern, Bishop Anthony Gilliard, and Supervisor Ele Evelyn Cooper. Florida Eastern, Bishop Jimmy L. Williams and Supervisor Joanne Golat Hill. Amen. Amen. We always include Supervisor Johnny Harrison of the Bahamas jurisdiction who resides here in Florida. Florida is a peninsula, which means we have water on both sides, which gives us beautiful oceans and beaches. Florida's fruit is the orange, which is juicy and sweet. And for breakfast, it's always a treat. Mickey and Minnie Mouse live right here in Orlando. Yes, Florida has so many pleasures that we hope you will have an opportunity to enjoy after this convocation. Florida is blessed to have both suns shining in our state, the S-O-N and the S-U-N. So our climate is always warm, but most importantly, we pray that you are spiritually blessed, inspired, and motivated this week for world evangelism, better homes, better schools, better communities, for a better word. You are welcome.
Amen. Earlier in the service, we had the opportunity to acknowledge our loved ones who have transitioned since we gathered um, during this time. And we want to definitely lift up the name of Bishop Roy L. Wimbush, a man, the legacy, the man of God. Would you please clap your hands and let's celebrate Bishop Roy L. Wimbush. Come on, we can do better than that. He was such a giant in our church. And we definitely remember his legacy. If you follow the platform of Mother Lewis, you will know that she is very key on education and prayer. Somebody shout education and prayer. When I was coming up in this church, the mothers told me, get your learning, but do not lose the burning. Amen. That simply means go to college, but do not forget that it is the power of the Holy Ghost that will keep you and promote you. And so we're going to have Supervisor Mary Tucker that will come and share with us our recipient for our International Department of Women Scholarship, followed by Lydia's Daughters Prayer Team, who will come to us with a season of prayer, after which we will be in the hands of our convention choir. We're getting ready for the word of the Lord. How many are excited about the word of the Lord? Amen. Let's receive Mother Tucker at this time. God bless you. What a delight it is to grant a request of our general supervisor. Here Mother goes again being a blessing. She is so selfless. We appreciate our mom. She called me on the phone and said, Mother Tucker, I want to do something. I want to present a very special scholarship. We have not presented scholarships since 2019, and we were really not going to present them in 2022. But Mother had another idea. You would think that the first scholarship if we were only going to do one, would be the Mother Barbara McCool Lewis Leadership Scholarship. But no, come on, scholarship committee. But no, Mother said, I want to do this scholarship, a legacy scholarship, Mother Willie Mae Rivers. Come on. Give her a great applause. I know we might be tired, but come on, come on, come on. Well, this was, the, this was the thing. She said, I don't want them to have to apply for it. I don't want them to uh, have to do anything to get it. I'm like, but how, we go, how am I going to find somebody? So the Lord never lets me down. There was a young lady that had sent me a letter. I sent this letter to mother, and I said, mother, will this be okay? Can we do her? And I don't know why I'm nervous, because I've been up here before. I said, mother, will this be okay? What about this lady? And of course, she said, of course. And so, this young lady that stepped out on faith I have people all the time, but this was the first person that sent a request for a scholarship. They didn't see it online. They didn't hear anybody talking about it for 2022, but she sent this letter to Reese. Supervisor Tucker, I pray that this letter finds you well. My name is Brittany Janice Scott. And I'm interested in the scholarship opportunities that the Church of God in Christ offer. She said, I belong to the Church of God in Christ, third year generation. She's a member of the new Holy Temple Cathedral, Church of God in Christ in Chattanooga, Tennessee, where Bishop Paul Bonner is her pastor. She said, I lived my entire life under the teachings of my grandfather and grandmother in the Church of God in Christ. She said, with the help of the Lord, I'm not reading the entire letter in the interest of time. With the help of the Lord, I will be a third year student at McCary Medical College this year after graduation. 
I plan to specialize in anesthesiology with a subspecialty in pediatric anesthesia. I'm asking to be considered for this scholarship. It would be a great help and a blessing. Please let me know the process. And so mother says, yes. Tonight, we're so pleased to award to Brittany J. Scott, the Mother Willie Mae Rivers Legacy Scholarship Award in the amount of $5,000. Our mom, our selfless mom, Mother Barbara McCool Lewis. And of course, Brittany is still in school, but we do have a video so you can see Brittany and hear her. Thank Mother. Hello. My name is Brittany Scott and I am a third year medical student at Meharry Medical College in Nashville, Tennessee. I will be graduating with my medical degree in 2024. I would like to take a moment to thank Mother Barbara McCoo Lewis, Mother Mary Tucker, and the scholarship committee for choosing me to be the 2022 recipient of the Mother Willie Mae Rivers Legacy Scholarship Award. I'm so truly honored to be able to accept this award. This blessing is going to help lighten some of the financial loads that come with tuition. So as I continue on to my journey to become an anesthesiologist, I ask that you all keep me in your thoughts and your prayers. Once again, thank you, thank you, thank you for your support and your investment into my future. Thank you. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. We are Lydia's daughters, and every fourth Tuesday of the month, we intercede for you. I'm going to ask if you are ages 33 to 52, if you would stand with us. You are Lydia's daughters. Father, we come into your presence on tonight, thanking you, God, for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. You are the true and the living God, and we bless you. We honor you, God, for who you are. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are Jehovah Shalom. You are Jehovah Rapha. And we bless your holy and your righteous name. Thank you, God, for the opportunity just to come into your presence. We seek your face. We seek your glory. We seek your power on tonight. Breathe on us and reign on us. Anoint us for your glory and for your honor. And we will bless your holy name. We will bless your righteous name because you alone are worthy. And so, Father, we bring into your presence our nation and our world. Father, we pray for this nation, for the leaders of this nation, the leaders of our world. God, you are able to turn hearts into favor for your people. Father, turn the hearts of our leaders of this nation. Lord, we pray right now that every decision is made is in favor of your people. God, you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think. God, we need your favor. Touch the hearts and minds of politicians everywhere. Lord, let them make decisions that favor your people like never before. God, you're able to cause us to prosper and be in health even as our soul prosper. God, we pray that the decisions that are made will cause us to prosper in you. Father, we pray that your hand would be upon them. Don't let them make any decisions that would cause damage to your people, that would cause harm 
to your people. Father, you're able, Lord, like you turned the heart of Pharaoh, turned the hearts of these politicians, God, in the name of Jesus. Don't let them make ungodly decisions on our behalf. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we need you to do it. We're calling on your name, Jesus. We need your hand, God. We need your favor, God, to go before us because And we magnify your name, God. We bring forth our leaders before you tonight, oh God. Touch our presiding bishop now, God. From the crown of his head, even unto the soles of his feet. Touch him in your name, Jesus. Anoint him in your name, Jesus. Keep the vision fresh before him. Touch all the bishops of our church right now, God. Touch that jurisdiction. Every state in the
praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. We honor God this evening. Amen. We honor our presiding bishop and the general board, to the board of bishops, to the executive women, to Lady Karen and the bishop's wives, to all of the people of the Lord. Amen. God is faithful. I stand this evening to let you know that for two years we attempted to see how we could gather together and continue the program of the Department of Women. Amen. We praise God for our General Mother. We praise God for her stellar leadership because time would not permit me to itemize all of the things that she completed in 2020 and 2021. Amen. In 2020, when all of this was kind of a struggle for us, we didn't know how we were going to get through this. We didn't know what the next month would bring. Amen. So mother called the women to prayer. And she orchestrated in 2020 four national prayer calls. And those prayer calls went for 12 hours. She appointed different ones to pray. Because all of this was new to us. We had no idea of the finality. We didn't know the outcome. But mother knew how to lead us to pray. So in 2021, we completed a year of praying. 2020, that was 2020. 2021, our nation was still in the throes of uncertainty. We didn't know how to move and, and how, uh, we certainly didn't know how to gather and gathering was not an option for us. But our general mother looked at the virtual options. Amen. And she successfully, in 2021, led us not only in the prayer options, but in leadership venues. She had four different leadership venues. She taught us uh, through the venues of Zoom uh, how to be successful in business. She taught us how uh, to be conservative with our finances. She taught us in the venues how we can stay close to God, uh, even though we were not gathering in person. And I praise God that she did not give up. She continued to meet with us. She continued to have the supervisors to come together and to plan. She continued to encourage us to love our bishops and love the bishops' wives and to pray for the women and to lead the women mind of hope. Ah, I praise God that as we got to May of 2021, uh, Mother had the capacity to lead the women's convention virtually. We successfully went through the entire program of the women's convention 
virtually. Amen. I'm talking about a leader. Talking about someone who was not afraid uh, to venture into areas unknown. We thank God for mother. She then prepared us for the bishop's virtual holy convocation. And on Women's Day, there were 32 plus women who received both their licenses, they were appointed to positions, a man, and she did this all virtually. And as I watched her, she was feeling that something was missing because we were not present. She took it upon herself to develop a commemorative document for all of the women who could not gather in Memphis or St. Louis. You received a printed document outlining your position and your appointment. This is a caring mother. She didn't want the women not to have something tangible. Amen. And here we are, 2022. We thank God for bringing us to this hour. We thank God for our leading leader. Amen. Mother Barbara McCool Lewis. Not only is she the general supervisor of the Department of Women, she is the president of this great conference. Amen. Time will not permit me to elaborate further. But ladies and gentlemen and saints of God and the leading uh, bishops and pastors and elders, we praise God for taking us through uh, areas unknown, bringing us to Orlando, back to a place of gathering. I'm convinced that it is the will of God for his people to gather together. Amen. I, I, can, I can research it in the Bible. It was God's will for mankind to be together. We thank God for the technology. But we're going to do everything that's required of us to be safe. But God has answered our prayer. And here we are in Orlando. Beautifully adorned, amen, standing, amen, in faith, amen, knowing that God has a word for us. Ladies and gentlemen, saints of God, it is my pleasure to present our mother, to present the leader of this great conference. I invite you to lift your cup. I invite you to believe God, there is a rhema word, and we will go away knowing that the Lord is with us. God bless you. I present to you Mother Barbara McCool Lewis, General Supervisor, President of the Women's International Convention. Receive her.
you. Thank you, choir. God bless you. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. To our visionary and anointed presiding bishop and chief apostle, the Bishop John Drew Sheard, to the first assistant presiding bishop, Bishop Jerry Wayne Macklin, second assistant presiding bishop, Bishop Lawrence Moot Wooten, to members of the general board, to the Board of Bishops, to every elected and appointed national officer, to our beautiful and anointed First Lady, Evangelist Karen Clark Sheard, our beloved General Supervisor Emerita, Mother Willie Mae Rivers, and the presiding Bishop and First Lady Emeritus, Bishop Charles E. Blake, Lady May L. Blake. Thank you, Mother Dr. Wilma Huey, First Assistant General Supervisor. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your faithfulness and loyalty to this work of the International Department of Women. To the Second Assistant General Supervisor, Mother Vanessa Winbush Gatlin, the third assistant general, Su assistant general supervisor, Mother Mary Jane Walton. To the administrative facilitator, coordinator of this Women's International Convention, Mother Barbara McKinney. Amen. To Mother Gladys Ross and the area representatives, Mother Mary Sims, who we miss so much, and praying for her, members of the executive board, Mother Harazine Keys, and the advisory board, to every administrative facilitator who have each worked untiringly towards the efforts of this holy convention. To our marshals, Dr. Lawana Grant and international evangelist Shirley Wooten. To all of the supervisors and bishops' wives, to the Florida bishops, to their wives, to the precious supervisors. Oh, you have made us feel so warm and welcome. The hospitality has just been superb. Thank you. To my jurisdictional leaders, of Southern California number one, the Bishop Joe Lewis Ely, and my jurisdictional supervisor, Mother Barbara Bryant. Where are you, J1? All right. You are my forever family. To my beloved and wonderful family, the Lewises. Would the Lewises please stand? Amen. This is my family. We're small in number, but we're great in love. My pastor, administrative assistant, Jeffrey Lewis. My first lady, Lady Floetta Lewis. My oldest son, the elder James A. Lewis, Jr. And to his lovely wife, Dr. Sonia Simpson Lewis. And to those two right there. My grandchildren my favorite grandson and only grandson, Jeffrey Lewis Jr., my favorite granddaughter and only granddaughter, Shannon Denise Lewis. I love you, family. Appreciate you so much. What a journey these two years have been, but we are here by the grace of God. All of us in this room have their own testimony that God indeed is faithful. This convention has been glorious from the 5 a.m. prayer with Mother Frances Kelly to the awesome musical on Monday night, Dr. Barbara Jackson Sago and all of the uh, western southern region, Florida, they were definitely in the house. 
Amen. On Friday, we will hear the official message of this convention from the voice, the voice of the Church of God in Christ, our presiding bishop, Bishop John Drew Sheard. Amen. He will give us the conclusion of the whole matter as we hear his voice. And then, of course, on tomorrow night, we will hear the voice of our First Lady, Evangelist Karen Clark Sheard, as well as Dr. Faye Butler on Thursday night, the Lord be willing. I want to remind you, if it's not already on your calendar, all roads, I don't know what Detroit's going to do with all of us, all roads will lead July the 18th to the city of Detroit, Michigan, where we will honor our presiding bishop in the inaugural celebration of the presiding bishop of the Church of God in Christ. If you have not made your reservations or reserved your room, please do so immediately because we are going to converge upon Detroit like Detroit has never experienced before. We're going to get all dressed up and honor and love on this man who we appreciate so very much. It is my joy to you to bring two more support groups. I am delighted to announce on tonight, very soon, virtually, the Soaring Singles, ages 18 to 55, will be begin virtually, and by this time next year, Lord willing, they will be well established. They will encourage and empower one another as single women who love God. And it's open not only to the Church of God in Christ, but we are hoping to win souls, that this will be a method to win women who are not married. We will be winning souls. We will be winning the loss through the soaring singles. Dr. Alicia Bowen, are you in the house of Ohio? She will serve as the chairperson. If you're in the house, wave. There she is. She will be the chairperson of this new support group for soaring singles, ages 18 to 55. Also, the single mothers support group, ages 18 to 55. Another support group that will encourage and provide tools and strategies, panel discussions that will lift the hearts of single mothers trying to survive in this world. Dr. Carla Galbraith of California, where are you, Dr. Galbraith? You might be here. Stand up. Dr. Carla Galbraith will be the facilitator and chairperson of the Single Mothers Support Group. Look to hear from them on social media very soon. Dear Gracious Father, on tonight, I bless and magnify your holy name. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. God, your name is so worthy, so worthy to be praised. I am so humbled and honored to stand before these, your people, the sheep of your pasture. Lord, I ask that you word my mouth and then validate those words that you shall give me with your anointing, realizing that it's not by might nor by power, but it is by your spirit. And so let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. You are our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Tonight, my address to you is preserving our legacy of holiness. 
preserving our legacy of holiness. It has been said, what you leave behind is not what is engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others. Legacy can be understood as what the world inherits from your existence. Actually, it is a phenomenon of humanity because legacy does not only occur after one's death, but it occurs during your existence and within your many roles. It is a powerful desire to leave a permanent mark in one's family, in the church, and in the world. It is how you are remembered in the minds of others. It is valued most by those who desire to live purposefully and leave an impact on future generations. It's concerned about the future of those who are connected to your character, your beliefs, and your values. In the word of the Lord, nestled among the pages of 2 Samuel chapter 20, there is a profound narrative which profiles a wise woman who was bold in her pursuits to preserve the legacy of her town. At the beginning of the chapter, we are introduced to a man named Sheba. He is a renegade who has rejected and rebelled against King David. Joab, the head of David's military force, begins to search to find Sheba. As Joab is leading his loyal soldiers, they are fiercely searching. Over time, they have passed through all the tribes of Israel and finally come to a little town called Abel, located in northern Israel, which was fortified by a huge, thick wall. Joab and his men began to plan to capture the town by building a siege ramp with the intent to break through the city's wall. It is during this process they hear the voice of a woman who is simply introduced as a wise woman. She emerges as a voice of reason. She calls out to Joab, hear, hear, come here that I may speak to you. When you confront danger, you speak with boldness and authority. Are you Joab? I am. Only a voice of wisdom would tame the ferocious nature of a man ready for battle. She appeals to him first by showing humility and honor. Listen to your maidservant. All he can say is, I am listening. She then speaks, making an appeal that was based on the laws of warfare as recorded in Deuteronomy 20 and 10. When you approach a city to fight against it, you shall offer it terms of peace first. She continues, I am of those who are peaceable and faithful in Israel. She calms the mindset of war with her words, obviously not her first time serving as a female voice judge, certainly a negotiator who instinctively appealed to Joab's patriotism. Are you seeking to destroy a city? Even a mother in Israel? Why would you swallow up the inheritance of the Lord? He replies, far be it from me that I should swallow up or destroy. He says, just give me Sheba. Wise women solve problems. 
wise women have solutions. She gives him a bold promise. Behold, his head will be thrown over the wall to you very soon. She uses righteous propaganda to protect her own beloved town, its neighbors and community of Abel. She then meets with the town people to share what she had promised to Joab. They are in agreement with the execution of her plan. They found Sheba hiding in their little town. They cut off his head and tossed it over the wall. This woman preserved the legacy of her town. Oh, the beauty of holiness. Beloved women of the church of God in Christ, our legacy is holiness. God has always intended for his people to be a holy people. Leviticus 20 and 26, for you shall be holy unto me, for I the Lord am holy and have severed you from the other people that should be mine. The word holy is listed 546 times in the Bible. The call to holiness is issued the moment you experience the new birth. Holiness is not a list of do this and do that. Holiness is an attribute of character rather than an experience. It's a way of life. It's a lifestyle. And it's developed over a period of time. Simultaneously, sanctification comes into play. Because holiness and sanctification come from the same Greek root word, hagios, which means to be set apart, separated, and dedicated to God. Sanctification is twofold. It's instantaneous, and it is progressive. John 15 and 3 says, now you are clean through the word which I have spoken to you. Second Corinthians 5, 17, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Women of God, women of God, women of God. Our foremothers have taught us first and foremost, above all that we do, we are holy women. If the foundation be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? We are sanctified women. We are clean vessels of honor, set apart for God's use. Our desires are holy. Our thoughts are holy. Our actions are holy. Our character is holy. Our convictions are holy. Our decisions are holy based on what pleases God. Holy women have a look. Look at your neighbor and say, you have the look. <laughs> we have a way about us. It's our demeanor and our persona. It's just different. You don't have to do anything. Just be you. When you walk in a room, you change the atmosphere. Because you're a holy woman. People are uncomfortable using profanity around you or negative, nasty talk. They say, excuse me, and you haven't even opened your mouth. Your identity is holy. And you know what? Even your DNA is holy. The greater one lives on the inside. We are the salt of the earth. We're strong. We're insightful. We're resilient. We're resolute. We do not compromise the standards of holiness. Yes, we are in the midst of evil, wicked times, desperate times, end times, chaotic times, inflation war in Ukraine and so many other parts of the world. 
unrest in several parts, voter suppression, mass shootings. There have been over 200 mass shootings since January 1st, 2022 in this country. There are 400 million guns in our country. 98% of those firearms belong to civilians. There's homelessness, fires, and who would have thought it? There's a shortage of baby formula. The ongoing Omicron variant, COVID, more than 100, 1 million people have lost their lives. And the list goes on and on. 19 babies shot down in Texas, two educators, 10 and even members of the Church of God in Christ because of a young man that was so full of hate in the city of Buffalo, New York. But saints tonight, it's what's happening in the church that must be of our concern. We are holy, we are called out. The forces of evil, the devil himself, seeks to contaminate us and defile our belief system. There is an all-out effort to mitigate, modify, alter, dilute the tenets of our faith. But we still believe in the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit, by whose indwelling the Christian is enabled to live a holy and separated life in this present world. You know what that means? There's power in the Holy Ghost. Look at your neighbor and say, there's power in the Holy Ghost. Like that wise woman of Abel, we must be women. We must be vigilant, courageous, to preserve our legacy of holiness. Holiness must be a pursuit which begins with commitment. Daily take on the attributes and character of a holy life as you submit to his work in and through you. Just model Jesus. Just model Jesus. Live it behind closed doors when nobody is looking. Live it within your family structure, in the marketplaces, among your neighbors, in the cities and in the communities. Yield yourself daily to his will for your life. Be strong and ready to defend what is right. Know that as you yield those creative ideas and plans working in your mind that come to you, Philippians 2.13, it is God who worketh in you the will and the do of his good pleasure. Share God's mighty acts. Psalms 145 and 4, let each generation Tell the children of his mighty acts. Let them proclaim your power. No, you are not weird. You are holy without compromise. Leviticus 10 and 10, and that you may put a difference between holy and holy, unholy, between clean and unclean. Women of God, women of the God, church of God in Christ, know who you are. Walk in your kingdom authority. You are royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a peculiar people and a holy nation. There's got to be a daily relationship with the God of the Bible. To live holy is to love God to give yourselves to prayer and the study of his word every single day. They that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled, that I may know him. And the power of his resurrection 
and the fellowship of his suffering. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these other things shall be added. Operate in the power of the Holy Ghost. But there are spoilers who have crept in and they're polluting and contaminating our standard of living. Like that wise woman of Abel who spared no pain to assure that negative influence be banished from her town. She and the town cut the head of Sheba and threw it over the wall. Saints, there are some dead heads. There are some dead heads that have got to be thrown out of our houses, over the walls, out of our churches, out of our environments. His word, he took me over to Galatians. And his word says, walk in the spirit. And if you walk in the spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. It's still in there, 2 Corinthians 6, 17. Come out from among them. Come out from among them. And be ye separate. Touch not the unclean things of the world. James 1, 27, keep ourselves unspotted from the world. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost which dwells in us, teaching us to deny ungodly, worldly lusts, to live soberly and righteous. Church, we are in a war. Demonic attacks are coming against us every hour, every minute of the day. We cannot afford to live in a vacuum of schemes and the devices and the tactics of the enemy, oppressing spirits, demonic activity. But thank God for his word that says no weapon, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into the captivity of Christ. We've got to trust God. Abraham staggered not at the promise but he was fully persuaded that if God said it, it was going to come to pass. My daughters, my daughters, my daughters. So many are drifting away. I know life's experiences have plagued you with low self-esteem, insecurity, mental health issues, unresolved issues, rape, molestation, abuse, rejection, oppression and depression, even suicidal thoughts. But with all the love in my heart for you tonight, there are some things I must say there are lifestyles among us that are threatening the legacy of holiness. Many of you, because of the knocks and blows of life, are broken and you're hurting. And so you have become vulnerable to what the devil has brought your way. Living in adultery is sin. You know that man is married. You know he has a family. I don't care how many Louis Vuitton purses 
dresses and shoes he buys you? How many red bottom shoes? He may move you on the other side of town. He's not going to marry you. You're just a piece on the side. You might have had to sleep to get your promotion. He may be someone that is a man of means. Holy Ghost, you told me you was going to help me to say this. But he may be your pastor. You do not need a sugar daddy. You can his soul. together, singing in the choir, a member of the church, your name is one name and his name is another name and you both have the same address. That's fornication. You are holy women. Well, I like you, but you got to prove. You got to prove that you love me. Well, you tell them I like you too, but you got to prove by waiting until you put a ring on it. Yeah. Women, 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 women. Calling you at two and three o'clock in the morning. What you doing? What do you think I'm doing? <laughs> or you can tell them I'm getting ready to go into my 3 a.m. prayer. You want to help me pray? There's no such thing as a holy hookup. dirty. Fornication is a sin. Marriage is honorable. It's honorable. It's honorable. And the bed is undefiled. Yes, make him put a ring on it, but not only because he put a ring on it and make you wait 10 years talking about we engaged. <laughs> We've got to preserve the legacy of holiness in the church of God in Christ. We're holy women. We're righteous women. My daughters, my daughters, my daughters 
across this world. Yes, God. Uncleanliness, lasciviousness, excessive, unrestrained behavior, lustful and lewd, anything goes. Someone invites you over their house for a party and you've got people sitting up two and three at a time making love to, oh, it's just, it's just, my husband would say it's just nasty. It's just nasty. <laughs> my daughters, my daughters, it is with unconditional love that I teach this lesson. We love you, but we hate what you're doing, the sin that's in you. The lesbian lifestyle is a sin. It's a sin, it's a sin, it's an abomination. Talking about I'm a man trapped in a woman's body. God does not make any mistakes. God made you a woman. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. If you're coming to these conventions just to be with your lesbian lover, you're not a holy woman. You're just a delegate to a convention. another woman you can't be holy and in love with another woman idolatry and chanting and witchcraft and seducing spirits and magic spells and sorcery and astrology crystals cleansing rooms tarot cards the moon has to be aligned with the sun and the sun has to be aligned with the earth. And then young women, young women, young women, you are not a cover girl. You know that young man is gay. And then perverted, controlling spirits. Jezebel, you're sitting on one side of the church and they're sitting on the other side. When I clap, you clap. When I leave, you leave. That's a Jezebel spirit. And I cast it out. I cast it out right now. The blood of Jesus. You be your own person. hatred, variance, emulations, unforgiveness, holding grudges, bitterness, intense emotions against one another. Bishop Mason said, cast the devil out of the mind. Look at your neighbor and say, I cast the devil out of the mind. 
drunkenness, reveling, I guess that's partying. You won't face the truth, taking a drink before you put your robe on to go sing in the choir. I know a lot of it, you're self-medicating yourself because of the pains that you're going through. Come to Jesus. stretch, not willing that any would perish, that it would all that would come to repentance. Mother Lizzie Robinson over a hundred years ago told us to stay out of the clubs. Women of God, we've got to lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Thank God for the power of the Holy Ghost. We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of power may be of God and not of us. Mothers in Zion, Titus 2 teachers, the spirit of the Lord is upon us to teach holiness. But we have to work what we do. We have to be an example. And we have to do it in the spirit of love. You cannot impose your bitterness and your misfortune on our daughters. The day of a bully spirit is out. I know when those of us that came up in the church Whatever they told us to do, they'd holler at us and go sit down and do this. And we were obedient. It certainly didn't hurt us, did it? But this generation, they're not going to tolerate that. You can't talk to them any old kind of way. By love and kindness have I drawn thee. When you approach them, they need to feel the love of Jesus. Not a judgmental spirit, not a condemning spirit, but they need to know that you care about their soul. Mothers, we have to live what we teach. The Bible says for us to be a pattern of good works. And remember, there's nothing too hard for God. Women of God, whatever you're into, whatever you're into, there's nothing too hard for God. First John 1 and 9, if you confess your sin, he's faithful. He's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. So as I close... We've got some dead heads to throw over the wall. We've got to throw them over the wall. Throw them over the wall. And remember where sin abound, grace that much more abounds. His grace is sufficient. His strength is made perfect in our weakness. Oh, women of God, you're better than this. God has a plan for your life. He which has begun a good work in us shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Casting all of your cares on him, he takes those iniquities and he casts it as far as the east is from the west. Just ask God to forgive you. Whatever you're doing, Lord, forgive me. Don't worry about what you have done. Repent and look ahead. Seek his face and just spend your entire day living holy, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. You're better than this. You belong to God. Women, no matter what your age, 
no matter what size, what color, what shape you are. Remember that God made you. Look at your neighbor and say, you're incredible. You are amazing. This woman, this room is filled with young women who love God. You wouldn't be here if you didn't love God. You're called according to his purpose. You're brilliant with astute minds. Some are single, some are married, some are widowed. Many of you are entrepreneurs. You're precious in the sight of the Lord. Remember, women of God, you can do all things through Christ, which strengthens you. I'm going to ask Mother Barbara Bryant to come and minister to you the needs I've been hearing all week long. Release what you came here with. You do not have to take back home. God will give you a release in your spirit where you can be all that God has called you to be. As you move forward in his strength, receive his love. Receive his love. Receive the love of Jesus. No matter how bad you feel about yourself, receive the love of Jesus. He is a re forgiving God. He's a loving God. He's a God that will reach and receive you with open arms. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Let's stand all over the room. What a thought-provoking word on tonight. Preserving the legacy of holiness. Why don't we just lift our hands? Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy. Right and true. Come on, let's lift our hands to heaven. And with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. As your heads are bowed, the word of the Lord has gone forth on tonight. Then I believe it shall not return void. Think about your life right now with Christ. Think about the things that the enemy have allowed to take place in your life and hold you back. Tonight is your night to get that release. We don't care what it is, whatever it is, God can break the chain tonight. The altar workers are here at the altar. I'm going to ask you to just come quickly where you are. Say, I have something I need to get rid of. I need to release it tonight. I don't want to leave here the same way that I came. God, I'm ready to throw it at the altar. I believe you can do it tonight just for me. Or maybe you're here, you're saying, Lord, I need your touch. I've been bullied. I've been controlled. I've allowed the enemy to take control of my mind. Just lift your hands and God can do it right where you are. Lift those hands high. Lift your hands high and say, Lord, do it for me tonight. It's me, God. It's me. It's not my neighbor, but it's me standing in the need of prayer. I need a release tonight. I need some things to drop off of, my, off of me. Release me right now in the name of Jesus. I don't want to go home the same way that I came. I want to be holy. I want to be righteous. I want to be saved. 
And so, Lord, with our hands lifted up high, we surrender our lives to you, our minds, our body, our spirits, and our soul. We pray even now against the enemy that has tried to get us away from the things of righteousness, the things of holiness. But the enemy is a liar. We grab a hold to the word tonight. And we shall not leave this house the same way that we came. I break and lose lesbianism. I break and lose controlling spirits. I break and lose witchcraft and sorcery. Demonic spirits in the mighty name of Jesus. Be free, be free, be free, be free in Jesus' name. And if you believe the Lord is lifting you, Oh my God, oh my God, I know that you have been blessed tonight. Our hearts are just filled. We're overflowing. Our general supervisor, our mother, talked to us tonight. It was as if she said, daughters, sit down and let me have a talk. It's when your mother said, I need to talk to you. She called us by our full name holy daughters of the Lord and we sat down and I said to somebody mother cleaned the house tonight she did real spring cleaning mother went into every area of the house every part of our lives because she said what is important it's so imperative that we preserve the legacy of holiness there's no alternative there is no other way, but I want you to know that holiness is for you. Right there where you are, you can receive the Lord Jesus into your heart. All you have to do is just let him know that you're sorry for your past. You can't change your past, but he's come now to give you life and that life more abundantly. Real simple. All you have to say is, Lord Jesus, here I am. Forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I want to be holy. I want to be yours. That's all it takes. And he will receive you into the kingdom of God. Welcome to the body of Christ. Oh my God. Welcome to the body of Christ trust that you heard the word tonight. Be bold. Be bold. Make a decision. Do what you need to do. Make the changes in your life so that you can be holy. I'll see you in the morning. Join us. This convention is only going to get better and better. So we look forward to seeing you. Thank you. Join us again tomorrow night. Make my life a sanctuary. Oh Lord, touch every son and daughter of Zion in this house tonight. Help us to be remindful of your word that we are called to be a holy generation. Help us to be mindful how we treat your people for we are called to be a righteous nation we are peculiar we're not like the world we are your sons and daughters of Zion help us to make a difference help us to make an impact help us to show the world through our lives who you are you are the great and mighty God Bless your people tonight. Somebody needs salvation. Wherever you are, God can save you right now. If you're in the room tonight and you say, Lord, I want to have that holiness, that righteousness that mother talked about. Just lift your hands and we're all going to repeat it together. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I believe your only son died on the cross so that I can have eternal life forgive me of my sins 
I want to be holy. I want to be righteous. Clean me up now. Give me a clean slate. Let me walk out of here a brand new creature. Save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. Hear my cry tonight in Jesus' name. If you believe that prayer, clap your hands where you are. Let's praise God for this awesome gift, not just to the church of God in Christ, but to the global world everywhere in the form of our convention president, Mother Barbara McCool Lewis. Let's praise God for that powerful word on tonight. Let's praise God for the reminder that we can't live any kind of way. We must live holy. We must live righteous. You didn't stand and clap good enough for me after that word. Let's praise God for our convention president preserving the legacy of holiness. Thank you, Mother. Thank you, Mother. Thank you for the reminder on tonight. Please don't leave. Please stop walking. We're getting ready to sow a, a gift into the anointing of this word that we heard on tonight. I'm going to ask all of the people of God very quickly to get a $20 gift. A $20 gift and stand where you are with that $20 gift. If you're giving on Giblify tonight, please go to the International Department of Women page. If you're giving a gift by PayPal, IDOW Kojic. If you're donating online, it's Kojic.org Women's Department. And if you're streaming tonight, you say you'd like to mail in that gift. I believe the address is on the screen, Women's International Convention. Please stand with your gift. What a word on tonight. Stir us up, Lord. Stir us up, Lord. Stir us up, Lord. Mm. Holy, 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 holy. Everyone ought to be standing. Holy is the land. Holy is the land Righteous 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 is the land Righteous is the Lamb. I'm going to ask you to follow the ushers and pass your gift. Those of you to my right, pass your gift to the center aisle. Watch your gift as it's going down the road. If you're to my left, pass your gift to the center aisle. And the ushers, ushers will follow you. Mm -hmm. Holy is the Lamb. Come on, help me sing it. Holy, 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 oh, holy, holy is the Lamb, holy is the Lamb.
precious, 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 precious is the Lamb, precious is the Lamb. You have time to worship Him, come on. Holy, 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 holy is the Lamb, holy is the Lamb, oh, he's right. Righteous, righteous, he want us to be righteous, righteous is the land, oh righteous is the land, oh he's worthy, Jesus is worthy. Oh, shame, the God we serve is, he's so worthy, worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb. Lord, we thank you for every gift and every giver tonight. Bless us all 100-fold in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you. Amen. We are all thankful for the word of the Lord tonight. One more time, let's clap our hands for our convention president and general supervisor. Thank you for pouring into your daughters. If you are walking, we're going to ask that you would cease all walking at this time. There is a blessing in the benediction. And our first assistant presiding bishop is coming to properly present our presiding bishop to have remarks, after which we will have the benediction by Bishop Larry Perkins. There's a blessing in the benediction. God bless you. Thank you very much. What a powerful, powerful, powerful word. This has been a God moment. Only God could have orchestrated what has happened tonight. Without any further delay, the only voice that should be heard from hence forth should be that of our presiding bishop. My brothers and sisters, would you stand? And he will speak for us all. Let's clap our hands for the presiding bishop of the Church of God in Christ, Bishop J. Drew Sheard. Come on, let's give God some praise. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. God bless you. Please remain standing. I won't hold you any longer, but our mother was absolutely awesome tonight. She talked with conviction. She talked under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. My brothers and sisters, let's not take this moment lightly. God is calling his church back to holiness. And if we're going to be what the Lord wants us to be, we're going to have to adhere to the Word of God. The Word of God is our roadmap to heaven. And I praise God for Mother Barbara McCoo Lewis. I'm telling you, we have the most wonderful leader of women's ministry in the world, right here in the Church of God in Christ. God bless you, Mother. We love you. 
We're praying for you. God bless all of the elect ladies, my beautiful wife, the assistant supervisors, all of the supervisors, first assistant, second assistant, third assistant, fourth assistant, all assistants, and the bishops and the pastors. God bless. I'm just glad to be in the house of the Lord. I said on today that we've been away for too long. We've been apart for too long. Look at somebody and say, I'm just glad to be in the number one more time. Time to go home. But Mother Huey said something. She said, lift up your cups and you will hear a word tonight. The Bible lets us know whatsoever things that you have learned and heard and seen in me. Do those things in Christ Jesus. Mother really gave us complete insight of what it means to live a holy and separated life. It's time to go home now. You may stand on your feet. I thank God that we can further embrace that which was given to us, the legacy that will cause us to preserve what God has put at our table, and for that we're thankful. So we can say, Mother, thank you. Thank you. Amen. Let the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you're my strength, you're my redeemer, and you're my holy God. Amen. God bless you.